going on? Mr. Sandman is signing back in and shit. I told y'all I'm back, man. It's about time for me to get into these motherfucking wrestling reviews again. Ugh. And these motherfuckers, <laughs> WWE, I swear to God, man. Yeah. What could I expect? You know what I'm saying? I know it, I should have known it was going to be a boring ass fucking show. Because it sure really was. Like, it was nothing really eventful about this shit or nothing. I'll just. Let me just dissect this real quick. First off, you know, they start off with the panels, the Raw panel and the SmackDown panel. You know, of course, when Daniel Bryan comes out, it was a big, you know, crazy chair. Everybody still loved Daniel Bryan. We also love Daniel Bryan. You know, that's a good thing he's still in the business in some type of capacity. Sucks that he's not wrestling anymore, but we still get to see him on TV. So, they start going into the draft. You know, okay, they ain't, say, they ain't waste no time. Let's get it. First round pick, Seth Rollins for Raw. And SmackDown pick Dean Ambrose. And I'm like, really? It's pretty interesting to see what Dean Ambrose, I mean, excuse me, yeah, what Dean Ambrose is going to do on SmackDown. I'm not going to lie, but... That just seems so predictable. Why are they just gonna have like you know, I guess Seth Rollins be um, Raw's first pick, and then have somebody like Rusev or something as SmackDown's first pick? Like why they gotta make shit so fucking predictable, man? But in a way, I ain't gonna lie. I I definitely want to see what Dean Ambrose is gonna do on the SmackDown roster. Even though I think he should stay on Raw because Raw is really his fit. And another thing too, like with with this with this bitch Stephanie McMahon, can somebody please put this bitch in her place? Like, she's getting out of control. Like, she just be cutting motherfuckers off. She be slapping everybody all over the damn place. I mean, grown ass men too, slapping everybody, beating them down. If this is back in like the attitude era or even the ruthless aggression era, she would not get away with this shit. Somebody would have been thrown her little ass somewhere, body slammed her, pedigreed her, rock bottom, whatever. She would have been caught that work. But somebody needs to do, it needs to go down. Like, Stephanie is getting a little bit too big for her bridges. Fuck out of here. And then after that, Raw picks up um, Charlotte. You know, so the uh, women's championship stays on Raw. You know, so, um, you know, Charlotte. Nah, she's okay. I want to see more from her, though, like, because she doesn't really throw on good matches like that anymore. Like, to tell you the truth, the, the last really good match I've seen her in was with, uh, in WrestleMania, when it was her against Sasha Banks and um, Becky Lynch. And after that, SmackDown picked AJ Styles. Good pick. You know, I think AJ... The belongs to SmackDown. That's a great fit for him. And then after that, a big shock. You know, it's not a shock, but it's still like, you know, everybody was excited. It, it, it created a pop. Finn Balor was going to Raw. He's finally in the main roster. We waited, we waited, and we waited, and he's finally coming to Raw. That's what's up, you know. It's been a long time since you know, he came to Raw, and I'm, I'm, I'm expected to see a lot of um, good matches from especially WrestleMania. I can't wait to see what they're going to do for this WrestleMania entrance. You know what I'm saying? But congratulations to Finn Balor finally making it to the to, um, uh, main roster. After that, you know, Cena um, interrupts them or whatever because he had a match. And he's supposed to be fighting Lou, Ga Lou Gallows. And then, um, you know, you already know the club came out with um, Lou Gallows. So it's like Cena's outnumbered. Oh, not for long, though. You know, Kaz and Amori have to come out and do their little shtick. I'm not going to lie. I'll, yo, I fucks with Kaz and Amori. I really think they're very entertaining. But... 
that shit, and you can't teach that. Like that that little that's a little fruity. Like why you can't say, and you can't teach that. Why you gotta put your finger like this and all that? Like you about to start doing the you know the Watusi or something. Uh, whatever. I think they're entertaining though. I like them. You know, nonetheless, I do like um Casino Mori. So um after that. They went to commercial break, but it wasn't a like only a commercial break. It was like a split screen commercial break. They were still showing the John Cena and Luke Gallows match while they were showing the commercial break. First time I ever seen that. I know it's the first time they ever did that. It has to be. And I'm wondering, like, hmm, that's pretty interesting. That's what. I, and at first, so I'm thinking, like, all right, now I know they're not gonna, I know they're not gonna really start doing that for Raw because. Or SmackDown, cause like, all right, now we do need some type of break from this shit. Don't tell me now, like, oh, you can even, you know what I'm saying? You even gonna be um, playing the, the um the program during commercial time? No, don't do that. I guess it was innovative for whatever for that time being, but don't even please don't start doing that shit, cause we do need a mental break. We can't just be. Shit, and then y'all motherfuckers want to be bringing two pay-per-views in one month? No, don't fucking come with this overload bullshit of WWE. It's too much. The hell. Let us at least have our commercial breaks. <laughs> Fuck. Damn. But, shit, shockingly, this dude, Luke Gallows, is actually catching Cena with some moves here and there. So I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. Well, you know, Cena still won, of course, and business as usual. After that, Raw picks Roman Reigns. Well, yeah, who cares, really? Then after that, SmackDown picks John Cena. So, um, we're definitely gonna get, we're definitely gonna see a lot of um, Dean Ambrose and John Cena matches in the Horizon. After that, Raw picks um, Brock Lesnar, which is perfect. Yes, Lesnar should stay on Raw. That fits that fits him to the T. And then, like I said, with the predictability, Orton goes to SmackDown. Like, come on, why why you have to pick Orton right after Lesnar? Or why you have to pick Ambrose right after Seth Rollins? Like, separate this shit up. Jeez and breeze. And another thing too, you know what I mean? Like, I would thought like, okay, New Day got drafted to Raw. As a, um, you know, as a stable. And I'm like, well, that's not fair. How come AJ didn't get drafted with um, um, Bullet Club? All them go to, you know, all, all them go to SmackDown together. Like, that's that's not fair. Now, I see why they do that because they're about to become the, um, the one of the tag team. Well, the only tag team to hold the tag belts for the longest. So, I see what they're trying to do with that. But still... They could have kept all the tag teams together. Don't play favoritism here. You know what I'm saying? After that, they had a tag team match with Zack Ryder and Darren Young with Bob Backlund against um, The Miz and Rusev. And why the fuck is the Zack... Why is Zack Ryder really getting this burn, though? I don't I don't even understand this shit. Like, this dude Zack Ryder is really getting burned out here now. And wasn't he getting burned from before and... He, he, he looked like a fucking jobber getting, you know, John Cena tongue kissing his girl and Kane throwing him off of stages, putting him on wheelchairs and all types of shit. Now he's. Whatever. Like, it's too much underdogs right now. That's the thing. Like, come on with this underdog shit. I thought this dude, um, Sami Zayn, was the only underdog. Like, everybody's a motherfucking underdog. Come on, you even got Darren Young. He's underdog too. And that's the other thing about I want to say about Darren Young. This dude, Darren Young, like, his moveset didn't even change. He still got the same old thing. Only thing different now is he does a cross-face chicken wing. I figured he was going to have a whole completely different moveset. Like, he was going to be more technical. Because, you know, you got Bob Backlund rolling with you. So, I figured he was going to have more technical type of moves. But, nothing creative. Still the same old Darren Young. Only thing is he does a cross face sugar wing. Whatever. But after that, you know, 
they miss the miss taps from the um, crossface chicken one. Whatever. <laughs> then Xavier Woods um gets in a um a match with this dude um Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt still doing this whole hypnotizing shit like Xavier Woods just stands there looking mad stuck like he's scared of him or he's like in a trance. And it's shit that's all looking a little crazy because this dude, you know how Bray Wyatt is on his knees and then this dude was getting close to him, close to him. Like, I right, now you're a little bit too close. What you want him to do? Blow you or something? Anyways, this dude did that until um he eventually beat Xavier Woods. Squash match. Nobody really cared about that. Oh man. Afterwards, Kane um was um they showed Kane in the ring after the commercial break, and then this dude um Kevin Owen shows up, like he's about to fight Kane one on one, and when he's walking down the ramp, Sami Zayn comes out, you know they start beating him up, da da da, you know they go and, they go and say a uh, little brawl, they brawl towards the ring, they get into the ring, and then Kane just chokes them them both and do the pyro, and I'm sitting here like. First of all, why is Kane even still around, man? Really, like, can this dude please go home? Kane and Big Show, like, these dudes, like, send them home. Let's get some new monsters on the TV. I'm so sick and tired of seeing Kane and Big Show for crying out loud, man. These, like, first of all, Kane is not scary anymore in no kind of fucking way. So this shit is really looking stupid right now. He's just wasting fucking time. And how much times motherfuckers is gonna bum out off a fucking choke slam? The choke slam he does it doesn't even look like it hurts any fucking more. The fuck out of here! Give me a break, please. Get this, get these fucking bums off my fucking TV, man. Then after you know these motherfuckers get choke slam, Raw um picks um Sami Zayn. Whatever, whatever. Then after that SmackDown. Picks Bray Wyatt, but we don't even know if the Wyatt family is gonna be with Bray Wyatt. I think he should, cause why not? And you know what I mean? Like I think Bray Wyatt should, st- and I don't, and, that, and that's a little, and that thing too. Like I don't think Bray Wyatt should even be on SmackDown. I think he just, she's, he should have been on Raw. SmackDown doesn't fit Bray Wyatt. Whatever. Then after that, Raw, Raw picks Sasha Banks and shit, the boss. And after that, SmackDown picks on um, Becky Lynch. The last kicker. I ain't gonna lie. Yo, Becky Lynch got some thick-ass legs and shit. She a little cutie. I'll give her that. She just needs, like... I don't know. There's something missing with her. She's not really popping like that, you know? Like, she needs something. Like, I guess she needs a switch up her gimmick or something. Because I don't know what a last kicker is or whatever. Fuck out of here. Do she need something different? Something that really make her stick out more. Then after that, Raw um, picks on um, Y2J. You know what I'm saying? After they cut to a... This is the, this is the thing that killed me. After they pick Y2J, okay? They cut to a backstage segment with Dean Ambrose holding the title. And I'm sitting there like, okay. Did they just cut off Raw with... This dude, Seth Rollins, holding the title. Didn't Stephanie McMahon just son everybody and just grab the title and gave it to Seth Rollins? How did Dean Ambrose just teleport with the title? WWE with these fucking gaps in a storyline, man. Like, this shit kills me. This shit is like, come on, B. Like, at least try to make, make sense here. After that, whatever... Got a handicap match between Sasha Banks versus um Charlotte and um this chick. Um fuck that big belly bitch name, Dana Brooke. Of course, um day one or whatever. Little squash match. I ain't gonna lie, outside the ring, Dana Brooke close line the hell out of fucking Sasha Banks. Like that was a goddamn that was a hell of a fucking clothesline. That should be her special move. Don't even catch bitches out uh, in, in the ring with that shit. Only catch bitches outside the ring and and have the ref count them out. Fuck that. That'd be your special move right there, Dana Brooke. <laughs> fucking um. 
after that, you know, the Raw picks Rusev. Then SmackDown picked The Miz. Then um, Raw finally picks fucking Kevin Owens. And I'm like, God damn. Until y'all motherfuckers all this time to fucking pick Kevin Owens? That's fucking crazy. Like, this dude... These niggas don't know what the fuck they doing with Kevin Owens. That's what I really want to say. Like, these motherfuckers got this talented dude. And they got this dude stuck in a mid court fighting fucking um, Sami Zayn on, for like fucking eight months. Like, do something with this fucking dude. This dude is so fucking talented, man. Y'all fucking fed him to see him for no motherfucking reason. And then y'all got him stuck in mid court limbo. Do something with this dude. He can fucking put on main event matches for Christ's sake. Damn. And after that, SmackDown picked Baron Corbin, born bumass, and um, Raw picks um, Enzo and Cass. So you know. Then after that, you know, Y2J had a match with Cesaro. Another slept on dude. They just be fucking sleeping on. Have him just put him in random matches, no kind of fucking big storylines or nothing. And it's getting to the point now. They just have him um doing the same move over and over. Now they calling it the uppercut party. No fuck that shit. They just have him do don't don't fucking try to name this shit to try to fucking try to try to cover up the bullshit. This dude has way more moves than the motherfucking European uppercut. Let this man let loose and let this dude fucking go in the try to go for the upper mid card, man. What is wrong with these dudes? Like y'all got. I'm trying not to rant, but it's it's difficult not to. This is why I stopped doing fucking videos in the first place. Y'all see talented motherfuckers right in front of you. Y'all just don't be like. Y'all just be like, oh, whoa, well, I don't care. The fuck. Oh whatever, man. They these on um, Y2J beats um this dude with a counter. Like he countered a um a springboard a springboard European uppercut with the um code breaker. Y2J wins. Now after commercial break, Becky Lynch attacks Natalia and shit, and the rest pull him apart. You know, try to give him a little you know flair for their match this coming Sunday. Then after that, Raw picks the club, so the clubs is officially disbanded. The last match they're gonna have is is at on um, Battleground, which fucking sucks. Then I ain't gonna lie, after this I got stoked. SmackDown picked American Alpha. This is an awesome choice. I always said SmackDown will be perfect for American Alpha, and then when later on down the road. When they disband the black Kurt Angle, whatever the fuck his name is, he will be perfect for SmackDown. Like, uh, that dude right there, I see a bright future for the black Kurt Angle. Whatever his name is, po po um, comment down below. I forgot his name. But this that black dude that look, that look like Kurt Angle from American Alpha, I see big things in his future. I really, really do. Then after that, Raw picks fucking Big Show. Like... Why are you even televising this? Why? Y'all gonna save that pick for somebody like, oh, Kurt Angle is back, or, oh shit, fuck it, I even settled for Diamond Dallas Page or something. Get this dude Big Show off my fucking TV, goddammit! <sighs> then after that, you know, SmackDown, you know, picked off Ziggler. Good move. You know what I'm saying? Dolph Ziggler, he deserves to be on SmackDown. I, I expect him to put on some good matches in the upper mid card. Like when it comes to like your John Cena's or your Dean Ambrose's, you know, or um, shit. Even AJ Styles. I can't wait to see him fight um, AJ Styles. Then on Raw Pick, sexy ass, thick ass, fine ass Nia Jax. I can't wait to see him on Raw. You know what I'm saying? Big bone, big bone bitch, leg dropping bitches, the reincarnation of Awesome Kong. You know what I'm saying? Can't wait for her to do damage. Then he had a backstage segment with Seth Rollins talking shit about um, Roman Reigns, about all oh, how he's he's not going to be 100% at Battleground, yada, yada, yada. Who cares? <laughs> then 
Raw picks Neville. I think that's a whack move. I think Neville should have been on SmackDown. Because, you know, it just fits him more for that high flying, you know, that high flying type of shit. You know, and he's supposed to be on that superhero type of moniker. So I figured he, he should have been on SmackDown instead of Raw, but whatever. Then after that, SmackDown picked Natalia and shit. Then finally, Raw picked fucking Cesaro. SmackDown picks ADR. And then for the final televised pick, Raw picks Sheamus. Final pick was Sheamus. They couldn't say any big pick or anything like that. Like, oh my God, the final pick for Raw is Goldberg or the final pick for Raw is Jesus Christ, somebody. Like, it's like they didn't even want to fucking bring some surprising new blood. Not, not new blood, but star power. Where's the star power? I mean, I understand, yeah, you want to get these young dudes over. Cool. No problem. But you got fucking Big Show and fucking Kane on this damn TV. And those spots should have been filled. Instead of Big Show and Kane fucking filling those spots. You should have motherfuckers there doing some other fucking talent doing something in them fucking spots, man. Damn. Then after that, Rollins and Ambrose fought for the title. Ambrose retained. It was an okay match, but I really wasn't interested because I'm so sick and tired of these motherfuckers fighting. Like, they fight almost all the damn time and they're going to fight on fucking Sunday too. But Roman Reigns is going to be added to the mix. Fuck out of here. They had a little celebration and SmackDown was over. <sighs> Let the suffering begin when it comes to these reviews because this shit was fucking boring. It really was boring. It was only a couple of highlights here and there. And it was a two-hour show. A two-hour show. You would think, like, okay, it's a two-hour show. They might do some, do some damage. These niggas ain't even do no damage in a two-hour show. So, you know, cutting raw, to three hour, cutting raw from three hours to two hours is not the answer. WWE just don't got it no more, man. These dudes are just fucking boring and they're fucking cornballs. This shit was not a good show. It was boring. It didn't have no, the the matches. All the matches fucking sucked. The main event was in, uh, and you got fucking Zack Ryder here still trying to be a fucking hero in the year 2016. And you got Big Show and Kane. You got Kane out here choke slamming these young guns. Fuck out of here with that bullshit. But anyways, <laughs> I'm back. More reviews coming. I guess Battleground Review should be next. Let's see what happens in Battleground, B. Peace out, motherfuckers.